Hey everybody, welcome to the Engadget podcast for the week of September the 19th. My name is Brian Heater, uh, being joined by uh, two new people. You have been on a podcast with before. I've been I've been podcasting with you before. It's you been have crazy. not been on a yeah, podcast I've, before. I've, Mark, I've been on with you before. Mark Purton on my left. Uh, have, you, you must have been on the Engadget podcast. I, I have, um, yeah. I mean, I think the last one I did was... Um, from CES 2006 or something oh, like that. Had a podcast in 2006. They, we, <laughs> Hard we, to believe. We right? called them. Uh, we called them um, the radio gram- gramophone casts. <laughs> That's it was cr- actually, yeah, crank up microphone. Sure, it was like literally that. the first podcast. <laughs> it was, <laughs> it was so the first podcast. We have a survivor from the original podcast, <laughs> Mark Burton, and uh, John Biggs from TechCrunch. Yeah, it was very exciting. Know. Yeah, I love I love Engadget. I read it. I read it infrequently. Mm-hmm. And I'm not actually aware of anything that goes on on it, but sure. I'm sure it's wonderful. Anytime Gizmodo <laughs> and links to it, <laughs> you'll, you'll, you'll wind if, up If on. it shows up on Boing Boing, yep. I know something's happening over here. Yep. Uh, how's, how, how have you been since, since, since you've been on the podcast last it's been, it's been It's been years. In the, been past, years. in the past year and a half? We've been what's, fine. What's Everything's happened? fine. Uh, we're okay. I mean, we're okay, right? We're fine. We're perfect. Okay. Every, what, I just didn't know if like, every week AOL in went terms well. I think everything's fine. Okay. I think your your job is safe. My job is sure. safe. Look, what do we get you to do? You think the future of internet content is bright. Yeah. What do we get to do all day? We get to D around on the internet mm-hmm. all day long. I like to say to... we get to D around on the eye. <laughs> D around on the <laughs> eye. Oh, Are we allowed to curse? I don't know. Uh, I don't want no, to. That's there's, more there, might, the there might be kids. There might be kids. <laughs> yep. uh, so we get to mess around on the internet all day long, mm-hmm. and we get paid for it. So I think these jobs are amazing. So I'm sure, so I'm, and I'm happy to. I'm proud and, to be on this and, thing. And I mean, how are they going to replace us? How are you going to find somebody else? How are you going to find to some do other that? lazy person who to likes write to write about stuff on Reddit all day? On write the internet. about phones. It's impossible. They're not out there. <laughs> They're just <laughs> no, not out there. Not going to find anyone. We are secure in our jobs. Yeah. So thank you for thank you for reinforcing that. <laughs> uh, so you should feel you should feel fine. Have you so so you just found out when you saw the rundown to the show, John, that there's a new iPhone? Is that correct? Yeah, yeah, it's, it's <laughs> okay. fascinating because I love I love this this new company. This company is amazing mm-hmm. with that Tim Cook guy. Yep, they're doing some amazing work in the in the fo- realm of phones. What do you what do you let, let's start with Tim Cook? What do you what are your thoughts on on Tim Cook's job? Not <sighs> what it is. I don't need a job description, yeah. but how he's been doing said job. I mean, he's he's been capable. He hasn't screwed anything up. <laughs> I'm not gonna. What am I gonna say? He's, no, I, am I gonna fair. say that he's been amazing? I'm gonna yeah. say he's been absolutely amazing. I'm going to say that he's been more than capable. He's been. He's been. Yep. He shows up to everything that he needs to show up. No, to. he's very punctual. Yeah, he's very he, punctual. You know, he shows up at the events wearing a black shirt. You know, yeah, he has a collar. So it's true. So I mean, if we're if we're being honest, I don't think. At this point, Apple is not Tim Cook. It's not a figurehead anymore. Mm-hmm. Apple has 30,000 employees. Yeah. Am I, it, I think that's what I read last. It's a big company. And it's not as big as, I don't know, Microsoft, but it's still pretty big. And 30,000 employees are all working hard to make cool stuff. So that's what's happening over there. It's not Tim Cook is leading the charge. It's not Johnny Ive is sitting there with his magical paintbrush and painting amazing things. But, is it, but, isn't, that, but isn't that kind of the problem right now, that there isn't one person with a very clear vision i mean I, this is this has been the the complaint and this is why every time they come out with a new announcement that their stock price drops a a bit is that um they've yet to do anything fully revolutionary since he's taken over understandable i mean you know there's, no. there's a bit of a grace period there and is. jobs it's been hasn't a, gone it's that been long a few years it's not like, yeah. It's, yeah. it's not like what what revolutionary thing can they do i mean the, the basically the only thing revolution they could do at this point is massively improve battery using graphene or some kind of crazy hydrogen stuff and all this other well i i, I guess i'm saying in terms of a, a new product line i, I mean, mean i do agree know, with you there's only the existing so far. products are at a mature point in the cycle sure. so and we're at a i think we're at a very boring part in in tech i would say <laughs> no no i would say we everyone's we hit, just turned off the podcast now well, no, it was, no, it's not. It's it's not boring in in terms of in not terms of massively changing. What what happened? What happened in like the early two thousands? You had laptops coming to come into fruition. You had like three hundred dollar laptop. You and I know about this very well. Mm-hmm. These really cheap we laptops were coming around. Yeah, it was wrote very, about laptops uh, exclusively. Uh, that was suicide inducing, and um, and the that whole mobile revolution came about. Then we had sort of this ultra book, this ultra light, this ultra 
very very small devices uh, that are very powerful, and that came out of that came the tablet. Is there another form factor to build? I don't know right now. I yeah, can't, I yes. can't even tell you. Yes. What's the next form factor? I don't know. That's the thing is we need somebody to figure that out. I was discussing with Alex Wilhelm, one of our writers, and he pointed this out. And this is very interesting. Name, name dropping. If I, he's, he's a very important writer. Mm-hmm. Uh, I was discussing this with Willem Dafoe, and uh, he <laughs> told me <laughs> with his teeth like dish, um, he said that wireless power is going to be very interesting because it allows you to have an entirely new form factor. You don't have mm. to put a big battery into sure. a phone. Mm-hmm. You don't have to put a big battery into a laptop. If we had a wireless power solution that could charge something out of the ether, you just have your device in your home and it charges it, then you wouldn't have to have bigger laptops. You could have ultra-thin things. Well, you're still going to need a, a, a sizable battery from when you're away from that charging center, right? Well, presumably this is going to be some sort of ubiquitous solution. Yeah. This, is all, this is all pie in the sky. Sure. But until that happens... What is Tim Cook going to do to amaze us all? There's very little that he could feasibly do, and I would argue that A7 is pretty amazing in itself. I I, I don't ag- I don't agree that there's very little he, he could do. I do agree that certainly probably nobody in this room has that vision that it takes to to get Apple to that Maybe. next product, or else probably we wouldn't be writing about these things. We'd be making them. But arguably, we sit here and think about this stuff all day long. Sure. So, but we uh, did you know? Did did anybody did anybody think that the tablet was going to be a huge revolution? I mean, there were a lot of existing tablets already kicking around. I thought it was going to be a. There there were a lot of existing tablets, and yeah. I said again and again, these aren't these aren't any good, and, and that's, that's a fairly obvious <laughs> statement. But I knew I was fairly certain that a somebody who can make a tablet right would get. Would be Maybe the way to think about this then is to think about what what existing space Apple could make better. I mean, well, that's what and, they've and, been doing all along. Right? And and you know, there are others. Obviously, you know, Steve's hobby, which you know has yet to take mm-hmm. off. Um, and everyone else seems to be capitalizing on that, and yeah, you know, it's doing better. I mean, they've they've certainly gone in the right direction. Although I think you know, I don't think it's going to continue because there's so many. There's uh, the Chromecast kind of yeah. to me yeah, that well, kills I mean, it completely. The Chromecast right? and smart TVs. Yeah. I mean, you know, you've got sort of thirty five dollars well, versus built in smart, smart TVs. I don't, I don't, I don't feel like smart TVs have ever been a great option. And, well, and you have, you have a lot of good enough solutions yeah. that because allow. because of how often often mm-hmm. we upgrade them i mean smart tvs to me don't make a heck of a lot of sense a 35 dollar dongle that you could plug into the back and upgrade yeah. every couple of years if you need to makes a lot more sense mm-hmm. so this is why apple getting into the really getting the smart tv i don't think is that great of a play for them well you could say something like not not making an apple tv per se like a full with a yeah. screen and mm-hmm. everything but some but something like a better apple tv device some kind superior. of box that uses so iTunes there was a that box plugs that into that. your television, perhaps? And, I mean, there's there's the space that Sonos runs right now. There's mm-hmm. the wireless music in the home. Uh, there's a lot of spaces like that it's, Roku. It's and, true in that, you know, Apple Apple made a huge play for music. And they've been, well, we did see, you know, we saw we saw iTunes Radio, which is definitely mm-hmm. a step in that, right, in, in that direction. So they, they've still got a vested interest in there. So maybe there's... Some more hardware components that they can. There's, there's room. There's yeah. room. I mean, Sonos has sort of dominated the high end there, and you know, Apple has sort of you know been content to sort of allow other manufacturers to work with AirPlay without sort of coming in and doing it themselves. I, I've just got to wonder if Apple's ever going to go with more of an Amazon approach, which is because to me, if they're really going to compete with the Chromecast, they're going to have to come out with a much cheaper device. And the way to do that is because they are such a content distribution platform is to be to subsidize that cost a little bit. But that's never a game that Apple has been really that willing to play. Yeah. Um, if, yeah. if you look at it, it uh, Tim Tim Cook did an interview with uh, with Business Insider today, in which he said, "Business Insider, or Business Week." Oh, was it Business Week? It better have been Business. It was week. Business Week. <laughs> it was Business Insider than Tim Cook slumming. I think it might have been Business Insider. I'll have to double check that. You could be right. No, no, I think it was Business Week. Okay, I think I think they might have uh, they, they might have knocked on a stall in the bathroom. <laughs> 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 might have been a captive audience. <laughs> uh, whichever whichever business rag it was, uh, Tim Cook essentially said something along the lines of. Um, which I, I thought was interesting. Uh, we were not in, we were not trying to make a budget phone. Basically, they just it, what, what he's saying is we kind of like happened into a way to create a lower cost device, which was let's kind of rebadge the iPhone five. But the reason why he was saying that I think is because Apple never wants to paint themselves as a company. Yeah, that's of course. they've always projected their project. margins. Yeah. you know, I mean the iPhone, you know the five the five C is not a budget phone, and the margins on it are pretty high. Um, so they is, will always protect their margins. So, so is there is there a play that Apple can make in TV at this point that makes sense? I mean, I don't think I don't think really going into you know competing against against the Samsungs and Sonys of the world and producing no, a full I, I HDTV don't see makes a lot of sense. I don't see that yeah, there's no that. margins in that. There's yeah. no margins in a TV. 
but yeah, a whole home audio kind of solution, that sort of thing might be interesting. More AirPlay support. Wearables is going to be a big thing. I mean, I have never been a big fan of smartwatches, but I've been you using... You are a big fan of watches. I've it? been a big fan of watches. I love watches. Yeah. I've been using the Pebble for a while now, and I understand I understand the draw. It's, it's very, very useful. You sit there, and you get your uh, texts on your well, wrist, and you mm-hmm. can... And it's very useful in that in that respect. But can Apple make a smartwatch that can stand alone by itself and work well with other devices? That's going to be something to see. I, you know, I was spending some time with the uh, with, with the Samsung, with the Sony at IFA. I, I, there's only so much you can do on that that big of a screen. Mm-hmm. I mean, it makes sense to have a, a you know kind of a surrogate device where you keep your other your other one around, but to actually do real computing on a 1.5 inch screen. Well, and, and someone's got to come up with one where you know the, the feature set and price point. You know, balance works out. I mean, well, it's not going to be Apple know, price you know, point. No, but I mean, you know, I mean, Samsung's is three hundred dollars. Yeah, which and it, it only know. works with like one phone. Yeah, the, the yeah, yeah, yeah. It's works yeah. with the Note three, it's, and that's it, right? Yeah, um, I, so which which is fine if you're Apple. Yeah, well, <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah I guess, <laughs> but it comes right down to but but there's I mean I, I I I can't see a world in which they charge less than three hundred dollars for their own their own smartwatch, right? Well, I don't know. I mean. I, I think if they can come up with something where they can sell it for less, where the you know they can still meet their margins, and where it ties in so closely to their ecosystem that people who own other Apple products really want it, I, I could see them doing it. I, I don't know how low they could go. Certainly, probably not to the Pebbles price, but you know if they can get it to two hundred, I would say between two and three hundred is probably where where it would land if they do it. I, it's also it's also hard to imagine it being a standalone computing device. No, no, it's, it's but I would, adjunct. but I would like, I would like to see sure. something that could be a standalone computing device. There, I mean, there are certain applications. I, yeah, I you. would like to see something like, that could be. I, it's, I, that's not. I, it's yeah, not going to do it. Nothing is working. I feel like for me. you're. I feel I like you're. You're, uh, you're I think I'm just fidgeting. Here. I think it's fine. I'm um, just fidgeting with it. It, it there are I guess there are there there are certain applications that you could do on a smartwatch that you wouldn't need a phone for. Um, Apple clearly, you know, they came out with the uh, the M7 chip on the uh, iPhone 5s, so they're clearly trying to make an even larger play at uh, fitness apps. Mm-hmm. That makes a lot of sense built into a phone. Yeah, the whatever the quantified self kind of junk. Yeah, yeah, tracking and you know telling bragging to people on Facebook how many miles you ran. I walk a lot. That I sort go, of thing. I go, cra- I go crazy. But um, uh, email, things like that. I mean, you're, you're probably going to need to carry your iPhone around. And 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 certainly, Apple is, is it's in their best interest to make a device where you also need an iPhone, right? That's 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 been their game all along. But to, they've never really done that. They've never done a device that I can think of niche out of the box that they've that requires another one of their products to mm, work well. The original iPod. That's true. No, it did, Mac it did only. require a Mac. And, Mac only. And there, was, right. and there was no over-the-air syncing, yeah. and you had to connect. Yeah. Bang. Yeah. Yeah, but yeah, that, was, that was kind of a... That, that was out of left field, because that's... I guess, all right, fine. Spider. You anyway, anyway, let's you move on to the actual... Let's okay. move on to the actual phones. Uh, we've talked about them quite a bit on the show, but we finally got a chance to to, to play with them. All right, so... I see your note in front of you. You're not a you're not an iOS user. Um, I do have an iPad. You, okay. Um, and um, I have had iPhones before, okay. but it's still so. running iOS four, right? My, you, just, you haven't updated it. <laughs> well, my, my iPad, I, I I I'm debating whether I am willing to sort of lose jailbreak and go iOS seven. So um, it's, really it's a tough nice. decision. Have you played with it? It's at all? pretty nice. It's, I've been using a, it for a while. It's pretty nice. I I upgraded on my five. Now I don't feel jealous of people with five S's. Oh, well, you, you, you haven't used it. You didn't use it previously. I used it for a little while. iOS 7? Yeah. I've seen it around. I've seen it around. It's very nice. It's, very, it's, a great, it's a great update for them because that, that whole skeuomorphism was really boring. Yeah. It was really... And if you look at it now, it's just kind of clunky. It was interesting back when it first started out because you basically had them demonstrating how powerful the processor was that you could put all these crazy textures on the screen. And now all this parallax stuff and all this other stuff, you have even more powerful processors that can give you icons that float over backgrounds and weird things that a lot of the other guys just can't pull off yet. I mean, it's a, it, that said, it does feel like largely an, an aesthetic update. I know they've been saying it's their, their biggest update since they came out with the operating system, but it, most of it feels look based yeah. and kind of some of the layout. I mean, there's, you know, notification center has been in, in, improved, and I, I do like the ability to get to settings but with a swipe mm-hmm. down that, that improves my life ever so slightly. Um, well, nothing like, groundbreaking there, I like though. the flashlight button right there. Sure. Because if, if I'm in a darkened alley, mm-hmm. I'm mm-hmm. trying to uh, 
Kind of you're chase somebody guy. down. Yeah. yeah. Oh, you're doing the hunting. <laughs> oh, yeah. No, okay. I'm, I'm, I'm the predator you're the in villain. this situation. You're the villain. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That's fair enough. No, I'm, I'm never afraid of other people. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's, but are it, they just playing catch up? I mean, how, on how this, much of that on, is. On that specific yeah. feature. But absolutely. even on you know, swiping was, to absolutely. get to settings. Um, is there is there a Android equivalent of just pressing a button to get a get a flashlight i didn't i don't i never saw that <laughs> no, I he's right. they, they're making great great strides <laughs> yes <in> the, flashlight. <laughs> the, flashlight <is. laughs> the flashlight flashlight technology is improved yeah, no, that, that's 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 worth the upgrade <laughs> yeah it, it looks better it's, it seems to run better um i mean they are a little bit catching up in multitasking but i do like this little swipe through feature right here I mean, yeah i mean my was, life is better it now worked, it worked well in the web os and now it works now it works even better i'm glad i stressed out for about three hours trying to download <laughs> this thing off of uh, off of apple servers yeah yesterday. it's very frustrating Frustrating yesterday. I have a really, really high MiFi bill. <laughs> the two gigs I mean, that I downloaded. I mean, in my in my general my general experience, or the, what what I what I like right now, I like I like iOS because I'm an iOS guy. I like Windows Phone a lot, just because it's sort of it gives you a lot of information on the tiles. And the last thing that I always that I like is basically Android, and I I rarely use Android. We have a Nexus Four. Wait, so you just one. admitted to liking the three major operating systems? I'm just saying that's the uh, liking them in an order. Oh, okay. Yeah. Where's BlackBerry fall? BlackBerry is BlackBerry just off falls. The, yeah. It's Whoa, off, it's off, it's Mark off the board. with the zinger. <laughs> Take that, it's off, Waterloo. It's off the board. Yeah. 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 <laughs> uh, so you do you have a do you have a uh, iPhone? I do, I do, I do. I do. I've, I've used them before. I have, and I have lots of Android two stuff. Different questions. I, I mean, have, you've used them, and do you have them? Yeah, I have them, and I have, I have lots of Android stuff floating around. We have a Nexus, Nexus Seven that we use. My wife uses to read on, mm-hmm. but just the congratulations on the literate wife. Yeah, she can read now. She's we were trained her, mm-hmm. um, but that's it's. I always think I always think Android's always playing catch up, and they they did a lot of stuff that's very similar to what happened in iOS Seven, but. A lot of the features that I see don't really impress me, and there's really nothing that, yeah. especially since there's a lot of pen, no penetration for like all the new stuff. Like 45% of people have installed Jelly Beam or whatever the latest one, uh, and that's not a fairly large penetration. There's still people running around with old old operating systems on there. I, I can't. I mean, I, I can't remember the last the last time I saw a mobile OS upgrade with a feature that really, really excited me. I mean, we're, yeah. I, or we're sort no, of getting true. into the same territory yeah. as we have been in hardware, which is where do you, yeah. where do you go from here? Again, I said, we're in a boring, we're in a boring state right now. We're in a, we're in a middle state, do interstitial. You, do, do, do you think that's <laughs> the fault of like, it's just too hard to innovate right now or just, you know, there's not, no, it's too easy to pushing. innovate. There's so much crazy stuff happening that when we see something, Oh, all of a sudden the car. Well, yeah, but innovate, you know, innovation, innovation lately has, has been like, you know, our, our screen is slightly larger or our processor slightly faster it's you know i mean it's not particularly interesting i guess you could say i guess you could say not in, in that respect but i would also say that we're so spoiled sure with the stuff that we have sure. now that we don't we see a slight improvement in the screen size we don't understand what went into it uh a lot of the stuff that we see i've i've been to foxconn and I kind of understand their R and D process now, and they they actually propose a lot of this stuff. So can we of, back up and talk about about <laughs> your your time at Foxconn? I've I've worked there for, mm-hmm. a, brief, for okay. a brief period when I was a uh, yeah. when I was a small Asian woman, and um, and uh, no, how's, that never. Yeah. How's the how's the gout? <laughs> <laughs> how's the pain? How's the how's the hand cloth? Uh, hours on that. Oh, that bad. That guy. Yeah, he he always wants to, uh, Mike Daisy always wants to take me out to drinks, and I we never get a chance <laughs> to meet up. I hope that's true. Every it time you're in it's, Chicago? It's, no, no, he's here. He's, oh, he's here. here. He's in New York. Okay. Yeah. yeah, he actually wants to meet up because I, I, yeah, I, I ravaged time. him. I ravaged him on the site. Talking to Mike Daisy. And he called me a tool. <laughs> but I, would, I would sit down and talk with him. Regardless, I was in Foxconn. I went to Foxconn. And I saw the, I saw the factories and I saw how everything works. Aside from all the obvious stuff with the, with the suicide nets and everything, they have an R&D section, which is very, very powerful. And they have training for a lot of the employees who are building stuff. So a lot of the stuff you see, they can do. They actually design and build themselves. And they go to Cisco and say, hey, do you want this router? Mm-hmm. It looks like this. Uh, can you make it blue? Yeah, we can make it blue. But then they also have a materials area where they have all these new materials. So they, they discover, okay, we can, we can mass like produce. how fast is a lead processor? Yeah, we can. Mercury. Well, it's, it's, it, <laughs> it's manufacturing. What do you want it to? What, you want it, you want it, you want you want little uh, you want little angels to come down and make your iPhones for you? There's no. It's that, that's that's how it works. Angels being all the the, the children. Who, angels who have being died there. From I lead saw poisoning. no children. Okay. I saw mm-hmm. no children dying of lead poisoning. I actually want to go to Guangdong and those cities and go see those like recycling plants because that sounds amazing. 
where they do like they do kill children. Where they recycle children. Where they recycle children into a slurry. That's where uh, that's where babies come from. Yeah. So, uh, Foxconn. So they have like the year I was there, their big thing was that they finally figured out how to mass produce in mass inlay glass, and and that's that was that's suddenly something that they discovered, and mm-hmm. you basically got an iPhone that had glass inset. So they used a lot of the material science that happens over at Foxconn to build the next thing. So I suspect what happened with the plastic is that just a year ago they said, hey, we can make this really cool, nice looking plastic. Yeah. Do mm-hmm. you want it on your phones? And Tim Cook's like, well, that's cool. And he, they but, put it on. But that's the, I mean, but, but, but that brings up another issue, which is, you know, when, when a lot of these devices are uh, really essentially being manufactured at the same places and have very similar, if not mm-hmm. the same components, that's another reason why we're not seeing a ton of differentiation between these devices. But that's also why Apple really likes to show off its manufacturing process. Because you remember the... Uh, well, also, you know, just to make people feel better. No, no, it's actually important. that, that, that Manufacturing is a very difficult job. I'm just saying, just to prove that there are no... Nobody on the, <laughs> yeah, okay, the age fun. of yeah, 15 so. there. <laughs> oh, that too, yeah. Yeah. Uh, and it's the same reason why watchmakers focus on all the pieces and all the all the steel types and all the gold and everything they put in. They try to show the little watch Swiss watchmaker making a watch. They're trying to show how what goes into making these phones. How it's much gold fairly, goes into the gold iPhone? Uh, a very small amount, okay. but the amount is you could. It's basically basically the price of the iPhone. So the uh, one I gold see. iPhone is the equivalent of gold. If you melted a human down, it would be worth less than the gold iPhone. Yes, it would be. Okay. Yeah. And it, and it is intrinsically worth less, yeah. the human life. Sure. Versus the gold iPhone. Um, but the... You're, 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 putting, you're taking off and on sides. Anyway, manufacturing is a very hard job. They're trying to show off how they manufacture. And every time something new comes out in manufacturing, they try it. Mm-hmm. That's all I'm trying to say. And they, and they know what they like, and they, and they actually, they're at the cutting edge. And those are innovations, but those are innovations that we don't accept as innovations or see as innovations. Because they aren't being, they aren't being sold well enough to us? Is that, is that the problem? Is, that, is, is Apple just not doing a good enough job? Are they not focusing on the right things? Well, I mean, Apple is, is focusing on the things that they think yeah. you know, consumers will be interested in. And you know, they're, at this point, they're incremental. Well, I, I mean, you know? if you're Apple, for example, you know, if you're if you're Tim Cook and you're standing up there, you're you're unveiling two new iPhones, and one of them has a, you know, one of them is 64 bit, and one of them, you know, potentially is doing twice as much processing as the last one. How do you make that exciting to people who don't work at Engadget? <laughs> well, I mean, you know, they don't. I, I mean, <laughs> that's why their stock price falls. That's why their market share falls. It, it is hard to make it exciting. I mean, it's I think, hard to come out with a know, totally different device. And, and you know, I think they've they've done a decent job, all things considered, mm-hmm. with with the new iPhones. I mean, the fingerprint reader is definitely something that, you know, people are finding attractive. The security features are the kinds of the kinds of things that the the government says every company should have in their phones. So, they're they're doing some things that you know help sort of move things forward but it is incremental it's sort of one of the, it's it's kind of an off year in that you know let's 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 add some things to this phone that will make it a much better device moving ahead but yeah, it's since it's S, more of a it's point upgrade it is an us year yeah which is which is bad and that's but that's what happens I mean, sure. you're gonna you're gonna deal with it and that's what they've decided to do uh what about the c what are your thoughts on the c mark um i think that it is um you know priced right I think that um, in terms of people who are looking for a cheaper iPhone, it's obviously a much better option than that was previously available. Um, you know, it's it's well, you know, it's in it's, in some respects, but it is you know, I mean, it's not cheap. Yeah, but it certainly you know allows people who don't want to spend two hundred dollars on contract to get something that is relatively current yeah it, it is but it you know i mean they've been they've been offering last generation devices for a while now they've just gotten better at dressing them up in a sense no, i mean maybe. there are there are some there are some tweaks there i think the mm-hmm. camera's a little bit, bit better there there are some nicer things on the device but from a hardware standpoint it's similar to what they've been doing all along i mean the 4s is still kicking yeah, yeah, yeah i mean dollars. they've got that for yeah, zero on contract and they killed the they killed the actual five yeah Right, right. So they that's placed gone. it with the 5C. Yeah, they the 5C. just must have had a ton of 4Ss in a warehouse somewhere <laughs> to keep that around for so long. Or maybe it was just cheaper to make it. Well, the 4S was the glass and metal, right? Yeah. And then the 5 was the was the metal only. So, yeah, maybe they did have a bunch of 4Ss. 
Yeah, or you know, or I, I I suspect that it that it's a lot harder when you're offering up three phones and two of them are basically the same phone, but one of them is you know has a has a plastic exterior and one of them is zero dollars, right? That's a, that's, a, that's a little bit harder. <laughs> you, gotta, you gotta sell something. That's a little bit that's a little <laughs> yeah. bit harder for play to make. I, you know, the thing I think some people were expecting though is for Apple to make a, a much larger play at developing nations because obviously yeah. that's I mean that's exploding right now mm -hmm. and, and, and I, you Android's going to win there well yeah I mean Android is going to win and, and Apple I think you know historically the way they go into new markets is the way they go into any market that you know again protecting the margin the high price mm -hmm. point I mean this is the first time that iPhones are available in China at the same time as in other markets they are hitting the Chinese market the same date they hit the US market and then gadget and, and Apple you know we want to go to China, but we're already there. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. But um, Apple, you know, wants... So, so is Apple. Apple's yeah, been in China for a They've been in China, and, but, you know, they, they want to make it clear that, you know, they're not skimping for the Chinese market. You know, they're not going mm -hmm. for, you know, the low-end consumers in China who, you know, have a huge number of phones to choose from, you know, models that are never available anyplace yeah, else. Yeah, native phones. And yeah. and, yeah, so, they're you know, they're going after the same kind of market they want anywhere else. They want the emerging middle class in the developing countries. They... They want the people who are willing to spend for premium products. And I would also argue that even the gold 5S is aimed at that market as well. I mean, that's kind sure. of a, I wouldn't say it's a gaudy color, but it's just something, it's something that, that we're not used to. We don't have gold phones. We're not running around with gold phones, but I think they, there's, the Russians will get a kick out of a gold phone. They'll buy anything over there. <laughs> yeah. It's not, I'm not uh, I know these Russians. Yeah, no, I mean, they'll, they'll succeed in developing markets by going yeah. after that thin layer, the middle class, the upper class. And, you know, they, they're not going after, you know, people who are going to buy a Nokia. Asha, but where's where's the communist? Where's the communist uh, phone? What's the good proletariat phone? What is a good proletariat phone? Uh, Firefox uh, OS. Firefox OS is mm -hmm. a good proletariat phone. Uh, Ubuntu. Ubuntu <laughs> phones. <laughs> Any or, kind uh, of open source. Or uh, what's it, the, uh, the, those, uh, those pirated, those pirate sort of like I, the, the Abel <laughs> iBone <Yeah. laughs> that you can get at the market. I would buy, I would buy a gold iBone. <laughs> <laughs> I know you would. Uh, yeah, I think I, I think the five C is going to do is, is going to do tremendously well when it comes down to it. I think a lot of people are looking are looking for a, a for an iPhone, but maybe aren't willing to spend that little that little extra amount to get them there. And 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 when push comes to shove, I think just having a brightly colored phone is going to be yeah. really really no, it'll, good. It'll, it'll sell. It it's going to be a lot of there's going to be a lot of people walking in off the store and saying, "No, it won't sell. It won't sell at all." No, we should be we should be contrary. <laughs> is that your final word? Yeah, we should just be mean and contrary. I've been trying to turn the show to the McLaughlin group for a very long time. <laughs> Nobody's come along with me. No, it's stupid. Wrong. <laughs> These ideas are horrible. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, th th this is going to be, I mean, the, the iPad, uh, the, uh, uh, iPod, I guess that would have been the Nano would have been the brightly colored yeah. one, right? The, no, the Mini. The Mini the would have been the brightly out. colored one. The, the, hugely, Nano, the, Nano was, the Nano was colorful as well. Remember? Was there a colors. period? No, there was, yeah, I'm yeah. sorry. There were so many iterations. Yeah, and, and, they've, and they've got the touch, um, they've got multicolored iPod touches. Yeah, now, so. it's, it's a good example of them yeah. the, you know, going after the that. The 5C market. is also interesting for like a parent like myself. Yeah. Because I gave my son a touch and he uses that to do FaceTime and stuff. But now if he had a phone phone that I was fairly certain he's not going to drop and break. Is your son sexting enough? Yes or no? I would have to check. I don't believe he is because he's only seven now. I'm not sure he's aware of uh, what sexting is, but I'm sure You haven't introduced him to Snapchat yet? I really haven't introduced him to Snapchat. <laughs> You're a tech crunch yet. That's and your I, job. Dude. And we're not going to we're not going to give him your uh, your Snapchat uh, <laughs> log or what you call it? Turning into a Radio Lab episode. Yeah, it really is. <laughs> because I don't want him. I don't want him Snapchatting with you. Mm. That just sounds horrible. Um, do you? I mean, do you need? Uh, okay, so, you know, great. Like he's got a he's got a, a a touch, but do you need an extra data plan, for example? <laughs> uh, do I need one? No. Do I? Are we going to eventually have? Or do I want one? No. Do we eventually need one? Sure. What's Everybody's the age? Have to have what's one. the age when when he actually needs to make you know calls? I don't even know. I have no idea. Do you have kids? Yeah, yeah. My my son's eleven and has his okay. first phone. Oh, so when so, did he get it? Um, he got it this year. Okay. All of his friends have phones. He's in sixth grade. What is what so, kind of phone is it? Um, just an extremely basic feature phone. Okay. So you know, so it's a burner. You got yeah, it's a burner. burner. <laughs> I mean, you know, he's, See, he's he's gonna lose it or drop sure. it, and you know, sure. he's, you're training your son to be a drug dealer. Well, <laughs> tra tra you know, just accepting the you know <laughs> the inevitability. I mean, accepting I the inevitability. Well, no, no, the, <laughs> the inevitability my, that this phone is not going to last. Yeah. yeah given my the fact that I have to look at all this stuff, and I'm kind of a and I'm kind of a, like a techno snob, I'd probably get him a 5C. 
I wouldn't get it to him. I wouldn't give it to him now. So I'd have to give him like the five C three or whatever is coming out in the next couple of years. I don't. I'm not sure if I want him to. I would like him to have all the features that we have, just so we just so we can communicate and do different things. Because mm-hmm. if he just has a burner like that, then yeah. obviously, like he can well, maybe send you a text message like very slowly. If he's being like is, hit by a is bus. Is this like an emergency? Is this a only only? I mean, call he's, you know, he, he, he texts and calls, okay. and, and that's all it does. Yeah. And he's, you know, he also has a touch, which he uses for games. And he's, yeah, yeah, yeah. And he's, okay. he's got, you know, he's so got... So if a, he like tapes them together, he's got... Yeah, he's got his game, yeah. right? Yeah. But, this, but the 5C basically tapes them together for you. Yeah. Pretty much, yeah. But you're still paying a little bit more for data and stuff. Yeah. No, I mean, if, if he manages to hold on to this for, you know, more than a few months without losing or breaking like it, That's good, then yeah. I think he's, you know, ready for something else. No. It's like you it's know? like what you give him an egg before they can have a pet. No, before they have a baby. That's how that works. Do you remember that? I don't believe in babies making babies, John. <laughs> well, this was in high school. You're supposed, yeah, to, yeah, you're yeah. supposed to carry the egg around, yeah. and then you're supposed to mate with the egg at the, mm, at the end. How, Is that how that? I don't think that's... I don't know. So I, don't I didn't remember that. Oh. You, might have, you probably got extra credit that year. Yeah, that was a mess. <laughs> that was horrible. Oh God! I still remember the smell. Anyway, what's so let's 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 uh, let's let, let's do some betting here. I mean, what's what's going to be the better seller, the S or the C? Um, I mean, you know, in terms of, of volume, yeah. um, I mean, I think the C is going to do better volume. I think, you know, for for people who already have iPhones, you know, relatively recent vintage, you know, yeah. there's not a compelling reason to upgrade to the S and the C is a play for people who are on the fence about iPhones. This is a first time fo- it's a yeah. first time phone or it's a first yeah. time iPhone yeah. phone yeah. sure. Yeah, no, it's definitely the C is going to be the biggest seller. I mean, you're going to sell it's going to it's the it's the mom phone, it's the it's the people who like colors phone whereas the 5S moms like colors. What do you you don't your mom doesn't like color? It's my mom's colorblind. How dare you? How dare you bring that up? That's very insensitive of you, John. It's the it's it's going to be the popular phone. It's going to be the phone for that all the kids want, and mm-hmm. the five S is going to be the phone for the nerds. And we're going to nerd out for a year. And the six is going to come out, and we're going to oh, I got out of six. And then the five S's are going to go cheap on uh, the same way. And it's it, it the, it's a circle of life. Hakuna matata is what well, mm-hmm. I'm trying to say here. Mm-hmm. Hakuna matata. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, BlackBerry had some very mixed news mm-hmm. the same day that uh, <laughs> yeah. the same day that iOS seven <laughs> came yeah, out. So there's the thing that they meant to announce, and then there's the uh, the little piece <laughs> the of information reality. that that yeah. came out. So the big, obviously, this is the phone that I think everybody was waiting for us to talk about this week. It's the uh, the Z thirty, um, mm-hmm. got a five inch display, super AMOLED, uh, pixel density is a little bit less. Does than, it have a one point seven gigahertz Snapdragon S four Pro processor? I'm gonna have to double check on that, but I believe that's check correct. Check on that. Check on yeah. that. Yeah, uh, it's you know it's 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 pretty much better in in all ways except for pixel density when it, uh, as compared to the 710. It's <laughs> yeah. The uh, it's a I guess a step in the right direction for them. Yeah. Except nobody cares. Except nobody cares, and forty yeah. percent of the workforce. Well, this is an addition to the phone. This is actually launched with the phone. They're they're mm-hmm. they're doing the BlackBerry OS layoff, which is going to be. It's a program, internal program okay. that lays off forty percent of the workforce. And you get a Z10 on your way. And you out. get a Z10 on the way out. <laughs> uh, this is this is so this every time um, I, I I was on for whatever reason I was on Canadian radio a few times. Yeah. Um, Canadian radio and television a few times in the past couple of weeks, and they always they bring you on to talk about the iPhone, and then for obvious reasons they end up <laughs> having to talk about the iPhone. Uh, yeah, about and I'm always Black very, Curry, I'm eh? always very. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, hoser, uh, I, I'm always very, I'm always very apologetic about it. Like I'm sorry that apparently I have to be the the one breaking the news to mm-hmm. you, but I. It's impossible to be bullish about black. Yeah, I was on yeah. some kind of I was on some kind of Canadian radio show. I believe it was the Canadian radio show hour, and uh, and they asked me to write a whole diatribe. It's brought to you by <laughs> Grandma's <laughs> baking soda. Garrison Keeler, Garrison Keeler hosted the show, right? Uh, they they asked me to write a whole rant, and I wrote a whole rant. I said, "Blackberry, you're done. It's over." And this yeah. was like a year ago, and they, I, I feel BlackBerry still doesn't talk to me. They refuse yeah. to talk to us. Yeah, I mean, you know, same with same with uh, Nokia. They've it's felt over for a while. They've obviously, you know, they've got some reserve there. There are there's a, there's enough handsets still floating mm-hmm. around that they're not going to just yeah, but, disappear off the face of the earth. But um, I'm not seeing anything that gives me gives me a lot of hope. No, I mean their, their market be, share is now lower than Windows Phone. Well, BlackBerry yeah. Messenger app is arriving on Android and Android iOS and iOS because. I've used BBM for years. Never. A lot of people use BBM. It's a very it's 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 the most successful thing 
Joe just pulled out his BlackBerry. Yeah. He's BBMing. <laughs> well, this is this is this is what I this is what I told my friends on Canadian radio when I was trying to explain the significance of uh, of of this app coming over to the other ecosystems is that if you are ever on the subway and you see a 15 year old girl using a BlackBerry, that is why. Because she's BBMing. Because she's BBMing. Why it's do, why the do one... we have, I want the sidekick to come back. That was the best phone in the world. Remember that? Yeah. That was a really good yeah. phone. And I remember as a predecessor yeah. to the Kin. Well, no, well, the Kin is garbage, <laughs> but the uh, the black the the sidekick did all that M, that IM stuff that was perfect. Yeah, I mean, black you know, BlackBerry is a black, BBM is a good app, and it's one of those that's you know, it, it was very good at tying people into an ecosystem for the same reason you said that you want your son to have an iPhone. Yeah, you can only BBM with people who are BBMing. It's just starting to sound really weird. <laughs> yeah, BBM is. is. BB- a I had, I had BBM for a while, and mm-hmm. I, I took. I was eating a lot of yogurt, and mm-hmm. it cleared up after mm-hmm. a while. But it's it's really tough because you sure. get a lot of really gastrointestinal pain. Yep. BBM probiotic. Uh, so so this. I mean, okay. The, I think the play certainly makes a lot of sense. They're they're enough. I mean, they're at a point now where pe- people have just moved on. People have people have kind of have given up given up the ghosts on that so you might as well just move it out to yeah. android and ios at the very least it'll it'll keep revenue coming into the company for long enough because to kids come using out with a free Z40. app <laughs> to <laughs> to text each other brief messages is the revenue stream of the future it'll help <laughs> you can actually i believe well. you can actually generate electricity based on the uh, on the on the frisson generated by some of these texts back and forth right is that how that's going to work it's probably going to be the number one revenue maker at Red Blackberry <laughs> in the coming year, I would say. That's like AOL and AIM, I think. I think, uh, I think we make most of our money yeah. with AIM. Well, MapQuest is still... MapQuest is very exciting. It's in, a very... Bringing in a, a, fair, a fair amount of revenue. What we need is a Marissa Mayer to come in and take care of things. So I guess, I guess, the, big, I guess the big question now, um, will Blackberry be around long enough for the Z30 to come out? Oh, Mark, I mean... It's supposed to come yeah. out before the holidays, so... Will I mean, they, they, the they'll be they'll be around. I mean, yeah. you know, they're, they're you know, they'll be around, you know, until somebody buys them or you know buys their patents. Um, patents, sure. I mean, you know, you know, buying the company and getting it, but and and I, I'm I mean, I can't sure see anybody open. buying them Who as wants, a yeah. yeah. I mean, you know, I mean, Microsoft's, you know, Microsoft's, out, of Microsoft's out of that game. Google's and, out of that game. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's you know, Apple obviously doesn't you know need sure. to be in that game. They they don't need you know they've got their own phones. Yeah. I mean, I I don't. I mean, Facebook Facebook doesn't need to do it. They you know. They, they've shown sure i mean face, so, yeah i guess facebook might make the most sense and uh, i mean if anybody is you know deep yeah. pocketed and would want it but i mean you know well, they're well, really well, making a play at business devices i think who facebook yeah, <laughs> yeah that's exactly that's exactly <laughs> no, i mean there's, there's really i mean yeah, yeah, yeah. they have a they have a patent portfolio i mean that's about it yeah and, gutting um, the company and obviously you know blackberry is going to wait until the last second before that happens before there aren't any options left um yeah there aren't there's not a lot of reason to buy to buy blackberry at this point and also why is the new blackberry device why is it a touchscreen device why are they still i would like to see i would like to see uh z10 sales versus q10 sales to see you yeah know, that would be relatively how well i mean or and i have doing. i've been out of this i haven't noticed are are the like the wall street guys still running around in fleets of these things i have not seen a lot i've seen one or two um in the wild granted i haven't been spending a lot of time at wall street since i occupied it uh but I don't. Yeah, important. You're getting it. That was fun. I'm getting things on my another podcast. It's called a wearable. <laughs> it's your other podcast. It's a wearable. It's on it. my body. Uh, no, I, I don't think they're. No, I mean, I, and you know, I mean, for years, businesses, you know, that sort of had, you know, policies about what kind of smartphone you could own. You know, a lot of them stuck with BlackBerry, and then you know, little by little, you know, things like you know, widespread support for Active Sync and things like that. You know, allowed companies to let their people migrate. I mean, you know, what, there, there were yeah. concerns about security, concerns about yeah. being able to, you know, access Exchange servers and things like that. Um, and this is also a little known fact that uh, after Windows Phone uh, in Europe, after that kind of petered out, uh, BlackBerry Windows became Mobile. Windows Mobile. Yeah, the original one. Uh, BlackBerry became sort of a de facto standard for business in Europe. So you have a lot of these guys r- still running around with, yeah. with yeah. Blackberries, and they, it's, it's still considered the fancier phone. No, and, and a lot of corporate IT departments for a long time were like, you know, you've got to use this because we've standardized mm-hmm. on it and we know it's secure. You know, we can shut it off remotely, yeah. things like that. But you know, the other platforms have caught up. Not only know. that, but but you know, they're. Uh, 
there, there's been a huge push over the last couple of years to let people bring their home phone mm-hmm. to work it's so cheaper. that they it's cheaper can for the, for and the they can get work emails all the time like yeah. we do yeah. yeah so it's a it's a win-win for them <laughs> uh yeah I let, let, i'm gonna open i'm gonna open up things uh to questions right now in chat and my I'm keeping in mind that there's a five minute delay or so so if you have any questions about what we've talked about Send that to us in chat. Uh, in the meantime, I do want to talk real quick about the the QX10, which um, I had a, a little chance to play with at IFA, but uh, Zach did a very very extensive hands on review with this thing. So for those of you who don't know, this is a it's a standalone lens. You it's a you use it with your smartphone. Um, the, when, when it was first unveiled, I was not very excited about it because I just kind of assumed it was going to be like one of those Olios or it was just going to be like a, literally like a lens that clips onto the back of your phone and <laughs> yeah. augments it a little bit. But it turns out it's much better than that. Um, the, you know, the, the, the breakthrough moment for me, I think we were sitting at, uh, at dinner at Eva and Zach um, pulls it off and you can actually use it independently of the phone and take shots. So it's a... It's a nice yeah, thing. Yeah, and, and you can, you know, you can use the phone as a viewfinder and mm-hmm. the lens over here. Yeah, there's no is, there's no viewfinder on the yeah, device itself, yeah. which is kind of a bummer, I think. But yeah, but I mean, for me, I, I was playing with Zach's and I, yeah. I, I, I was very dubious as well. I, I you know, and, and I'm still a little dubious. The idea of sort of clipping this thing to your phone, I, I don't see it as a mass market product. It's a niche thing. Not necessarily but, to clip but, it to it, though. But I mean, no, I, that's what yeah. I'm saying. I, I like the fact that you yeah. don't. I mean, because... You know, I, I, when when I originally envisioned it, I thought you know, like like you like like the Olio, yeah. I, you know, I was envisioning it sort of having to like be positioned over your phone camera's yeah. lens or whatever, and it's not. It's it basically communicates with your phone via Wi-Fi. No, I so you can have your phone over here and the lens over there. And um, can I, you, can this work with any phone? Yeah, yeah, there's, yeah. There's, yeah, there's, yeah, there's Android there's and phones, iOS yeah. software for it. Interesting. Um, there is one. And, and the the pictures are really great. Um, Zach was really impressed. Obviously, Zach's a big fan of Sony's yeah. cameras. We've all got uh, NEXs for shows. Um, there's one pretty big caveat for me, though, is the fact that it costs uh, 250 bucks, which you know he's saying is still within the reach of many consumers. But but honestly, 250 bucks. Why is it better? Than yeah, no. I, I, shoot? I mean, again, I I don't yeah. see it as a mass market product. But for people who share a lot of pictures and you know want to up the quality and you know are used to using a traditional camera but have you know grown used to the convenience of a phone yeah I, and and you know it's, it's not that much money compared to you know an, an okay point and shoot yeah yeah i mean what what this i think what this does effectively is this kills that very small emerging space of those um those samsung android devices the Samsung, the, and, the Android, the Android camera, Galaxy phone, phone, Zoom cameras, cameras. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. I, I think this this kind of effectively kills that. Um, but you know, is 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 the convenience that much? You know, if you if you're if, I mean, if if you're a photographer, you've got a camera. Mm-hmm. You've probably got a relatively compact camera. You've got a phone. I. I yeah, I just don't see this appealing to a ton of people, as you said, Mark. Well, I mean, it is. It's if if you're still gonna if you don't want to carry around a point and shoot, I guess this is valuable. Yeah, I no, I'm, I, I, I think, you know, I'm, I'm sort of more surprised by the higher end version mm-hmm. because, you know, 250, I, I can see people buying it, you know, if not in, in, you know, huge numbers, at least a reasonable enough, enough niche to make it worth making. But the, 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 the $500 one, that's, you know, basically, you know, that, that's a next. And, and yeah, I mean, why, <laughs> you know, why would you spend that on, on something like this when, when you can get, you know, a, a really good, you know, high end compact or certainly mid range compact or, you know, you know, basically, just you know, get yourself a you know a, a compact system. Don't spend five hundred dollars on something that's just an adjunct to your smartphone. I'm I'm tempted to I'm tempted to try covering a show with one of these things though, really, just in in terms of like in terms just of like hold it up portability. Yeah, but just having literally having something you can just slip out of your pocket and put on your put on your forehead yeah, right like in the middle doctor. of your forehead. Pretend to be a doctor. <laughs> Pretend to be a doctor, <laughs> yeah. and, and you do that anyway. So this would actually mm-hmm. add credence to your uh, to your lie. Getting back into radio lab territory. <laughs> uh, I think that about uh, that about covers it. I want to wrap it up now. Uh, John, thank you so much for joining us. John Biggs. Yeah, thank you for having me. It's Twitter, been great. At John Biggs. I, bring me bring me on more. I'm I'm a, I'm a fun guy. I mean, we'll we'll, we'll do a performance review after the show. Oh shit. <laughs> No, nope, there it is. Oh. There it is. All right, you had to, you were just swearing in the in the waning moments of the show. <laughs> <laughs> you were not going to get out of it without dropping an S bomb. Uh, Mark, welcome back oh, after. Thanks. Yeah. 
eight years. Eight years. Eight, eight years, years since my last Engadget podcast. Mm-hmm. Yeah, jo- bless, Joe is going to find it in the archives. Bless somewhere. me, Father, for I have sinned. It's been eight years since so, my last Engadget podcast. We'll see you in eight years, Mark. Okay. At, uh, at, at Mark Burton on Twitter. Um, yeah. Nice uh, Stooges reference on your, uh, oh, on, your on your Twitter bio. Check that out. <laughs> I'm at Be Heater. The Andrew WK joke on mine. See you guys next week. <laughs>